Hello there guys, my name is JL Gimpy Dwarf and welcome back to another episode of Space Engineers. So, what are we looking at today? Well, we are looking at a ship that I am currently in the midst of finishing up on in terms of its logic, um, such as timers and things like that. So, this is the Xenon Exploration Vessel and this is something I've been working on for the past, well, I've, I've spent probably about 20 hours building it in all fairness. I'm almost pushing 800 hours on Space Engineers. It's getting crazy. So, this is what I was on about when I was talking about the updates in terms of me being able to focus on ships I'm good at building. So, this is what I've basically designed at the moment. It's a very hodgepodge looking ship. It looks very, very odd. And that's the whole point. It's kind of going off of a, a lived in space sort of feel. Um, think alien. So, think alien and then think how the ships are. They're not very symmetrical. They're, they're, they look like things have been added to them where they shouldn't really have been put and they look a bit weird but at the same time because of the weirdness they, they look quite cool if that makes any sense. So this is as you could probably tell a very modified world and it does have more mods on than the uh, the you know the uh, world I allowed you well showed you guys to download and get some of the mods that I use on. Um, I basically started just adding mods in that will help me with this build and I think that's how I'm going to go for the future. Now, when this build is done and complete, which I'm hoping will be soon, it will go onto the workshop and it'll basically enable you guys to check it out and see some of the features. I will go through all of the features once they're done and show them off in like a, a highlights video sort of thing where I'll like just show our flyovers and how everything is meant to work on the craft. So, this is the craft from the bottom as well. It's not special on the bottom at the moment. I am going to add some more things to it. But it is getting there, I think. So what we'll do is we'll go through some of the cool features. And then I'll just leave the rest to you guys' interpretations. You know, and, and just give me some suggestions on what you'd like to see me do with specific areas of the ship. Because I am building it myself, yes. But it'd be cool if, if people would, you know, mention a few things. And give me more ideas on how to make this ten times better than it already is so let's get into it so if we go f6 now we start off at the back of the craft now if I can get out oh my god here we go one of the main problems as you just saw getting out of that door it does work when it's on flat ground so this is the back section of it now it does have these sectan wings that fold out which are very very cool very TIE fighter-esque and they have been put on here because they really do blend in with the side panel that I've already got on here and these side panels are meant to just purely be for protection from debris and things like that and we've also got a little drone there that is just for recon purposes with two cameras on and it just flies around with this little spotlight and spots out potential things that we could potentially salvage or places where we can land on a planet or asteroid so coming through this back door here which you can close on the underside because there is a button this opens and closes very specially so as you can probably tell it's all piston operated but it's not just that it's this check this out So, there was a little bit of a wiggle, still a little bit of a wiggle, but that is basically what it does. So, I'm trying to make this ship talk to you and be as interactive with the users as possible by incorporating AI sounding blocks and sound blocks and things like that into it. So, there are a few sound blocks up here, there's four of them up here, one's for the depressurizing effect. Um, one of them's for the alarm. Another one is for the uh, for the systems resetting to normal. And there's another one in there as well, which is I believe, uh, if I can remember all the controls to this, it is just a general alarm that goes off if something goes wrong on the ship that everyone has access to. Press. So, in the back section, we've got this like seating area, engineering area where two engineers can happily live in here, just you know, sleep in here and possibly eat use this bench to repair stuff. We've got some really nice glassed areas as well and it is all oxygenated as well so in this room here we do have full pressurization even though this does have gaps in and doesn't class as a technical area um, still wiggling a little bit that but it does actually say I've got no oxygen here which is weird it just doesn't pick up this door but I think when it does pick up that sort of thing what I'll do is I'll have it so this door shuts here and basically this becomes one big airlock and you know it depressurizes and then what happens is is it enables the door to open well the, the you know that that gap between the door opening and the ladders moving or the stairs coming down to you know to make sure everything goes 
as planned. We have a seat here which is for the engines because there are one in, well, there is one engine there, there's one engine behind there, there's one engine behind that wall there and another engine over here by the transformer box and this is where the engine controller actually sits because I wanted to have the engine room to be like a boat. So you have an engine room at the back where people, or you a reactor room, and basically people, um, they turn the engines on down there and just notify the captain that they're turned on. So I'm going to have like a sound system that goes to the cockpit and actually notifies when I've switched that button on and they then know that the, there is power because it does use battery power when it's actually turned off and all the reactors are off the battery power is just there to keep the lights running and things like that like emergency lighting and things so it's pretty pretty cool we're using the M Masters mod uh, well, uh, program code and basically it enables all these screens to show different bits of information and that information there is something I've entered to add a bit more backstory to the ship and we've got some over here that tell me if things are pressurized or non-pressurized still a few bugs with the pressurization with rooms because it doesn't seem to be picking up some of the blocks correctly and those three items there that aren't pressurized should be pressurized because the rooms are sealed so what we'll do is we'll move up and through this corridor we've got a nice little glass area now this is one of the areas where it doesn't pressurize for, for some weird reason even with these doors when I close these doors it doesn't pressurize so it's not picking up the glass correctly and uh, it's just being a little bit weird but we can get past that and we can crack on so coming through here we've got this nice sort of corridor section you've got a blast door here which does close as well to add a bit more protection don't actually think it does I think it has the standard damage rating as a normal door but it looks cool when it opens and closes and it gives it a little bit more of a feature to play around with. We've got like a nice desk that cuts across that as well, which is well, you know, a leaning area. And um, we've got two first aid sections here as well, which are just for the crew to use in the case of an emergency, they you know, minor injuries and things like that. And then in here we've got a bedroom. So in this bedroom we've got four beds and they all have different characters on. Well actually go into F8 mode and go zooming in there. We've actually got different screens that give different names for people. So we've got the vessel pilot here. Um, we've got the doctor. Um, we've got KS7, who is the soldier, who is also on the um, Alien Squadron videos I do. He is the guy who's been kidnapped. It, just for anyone out there who wants to know, go watch the videos. They're really cool. And this is tech. So he's the tech technical engineer. So he does all the computery stuff. So we've got like different character signs. Now, best part about these rooms is, well this room so far, is it's the one room I've actually incorporated a night system into. Most of the ship will go into night mode when, um, you know, the captain will say night mode engage, he wants to lower the lights, decrease the power usage and change the colour of the lights for a better sleeping colour, if that makes sense. And uh, you can basically switch the room from day to night. And we've got some lovely windows again looking up at the stars. So it's really, really cool. Other features we have in here is we've got a door open and door closed. We've also got a door lock in case you want to lock yourself in. And we've got some music in here as well. So you can just turn that on, get a little uh, agile on, and just have a giggle. So as we come through here, we have the meeting room. I can still hear that music. Okay, it's gone. So we've got the meeting room here now this has some low screens because as you sit down the screen is actually at a nice level then for you to read I think the perspective is still a little bit off with the feet um, and everything just wiggles around a little bit weirdly enough but that's probably down to them changing the animation I noticed it did that, did that before though before the animations changed now we also have holograms on this so I've used the projectors and the lights and we can turn this cool projector on so it shows a gun so a weapon system for a ship of some sort who knows and then we've also got like a Death Star-esque looking thing here which shows off you know just like a planet of some sort you know just try to add a bit more realism to this and uh, you know space realism anyway We've even got some information about the vessel. It's called the Xenon Explorer Vessel or Exploration Vessel. Um, we've got a vessel code, a vessel yard, which is more and, ro more and white, which is something I've come up with. Uh, it's basically where the ship is manufactured on Earth. And then we have a vessel company, which is, of course, the DDC. And we've got a registration number because I, I figured space spacecrafts have got to be like cars, right? So they've got to have a registration plate and stuff. Um, We've also got some screens here just displaying some general things about the life support and the reactors. Just in case you want to know any information without being in the reactor room, you can go, holy crap, reactor one is off or broken. You can you can 
see that and then maybe rush down to help the engineers fix it. We've even got like a little kitchenette here, so we've got like a like a, a stove here to cook on, using some of the blocks to replicate you know some of the looks of things. And we've got some chest down there acting as like a stove. Timer blocks under here just for the controls, and uh, there are more of them by the way. Just to let you know, there's a lot more of them. And then we've got some, you know, piping going through the ship where this is pressurised and a lovely, lovely viewing space. Very, very open this room and I quite like this room in all fairness with the whole desk and things. We've even got some shelving here just, just for your odds and sods. Now, coming through here, we've got a bit of a step there, painted it yellow and black just to say mind your step. And then in here we've got a little bathroom which does have a sound blocking as well for the alarms. There are alarms in every room so you can sound the alarm and everyone will hear it. I haven't just set one type, one sound block to you know sound off the whole ship. I've, I've set it so there's multiple ones and they're set to like a, a, a good distance for that room because I figured sound doesn't travel. Uh, sound doesn't travel through walls that well in real life and these would be metal walls or something of the sort, an alloy wall so the sound won't travel that far so I've decided to you know just make it so it's a bit more realistic so when you are in this room you'll hear it, when you come out of this room you won't hear it so that's that and then coming through here is the cockpit which isn't done yet this is nowhere near done also, if you notice, I've oxygenated these seats um, from Azimuth. Uh, thank you, Tumble TV, again for these seats. They look really, really sweet. And uh, we've got, you know, these this piping going into the back of them, which basically oxygenates the cockpit. Also, if you didn't notice, that is also the same on the engines because I figured the three most important people on this would be the two pilots and the reactor guy. Those would be the main guys controlling the ship, so they need the oxygen. And you know, I'll probably put some chests around that are hooked up to this that enable you to actually get some oxygen packs out of the system so you can, you know, survive if there is a whole breach. So that is basically it. There are a few things, a few cool features about this ship. Now if I do this and hit number one. Is it number one? No, it's not number one, it's not number one. That is completely the wrong one. Um it's actually number two. And what number two does actually brings the landing gears down and everything, does all that gubbins. And uh, what number one actually does is brings it out, uh, well it actually unlocks the landing gears just in case they are in a locked position, brings them down and then it also um, it like, unlocks them, brings them up and the side panels come out, that's flight mode ready. I will have a noise that will show to say flight mode ready, that will you'll hear it when you turn that on and uh, I'll have a, a landing mode ready as well noise which I've already found in the packs and it's going to be really cool. Those screens there will display some messages like landing gear up, landing gear down and they'll also display information regarding um, you know air pressure and things like that within the ship just in case you want to know how much pressure you are losing within the ship. I will probably get M Masters to try and help me if he can because I've got I could contact him and see if he could help me out with it um, just to get that working correctly but uh, other than that that is basically the craft I think it, I'm, it's going really well at the moment and I hope you guys enjoy the amount of detail I've put into this because I've really really tried with this and I hope you guys can see that at the moment there's a lot of detail going into this and I freaking love the ship especially with the wings look at that it's beautiful so that has been the, ex the, the Xenon exploration vessel and I hope you guys have enjoyed. Now again, it will be coming to the workshop fairly soon. Can't really promise any dates at the moment. Just because of work and college and everything else that I've currently got to do as well as, you know, producing content for you guys. Which isn't a burden, it's something I enjoy doing, but you have to prioritise things at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing this quick sneak peek. Sorry the videos come out quite late. I have tried to keep it as quick as possible, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoy the video tomorrow as well. And I'll see you guys later. Peace! Also, just as a quick thing I forgot to mention, if you guys wouldn't mind, would we be able to try and get 100 likes on this video just because it, it's great to see how many people are actually enthusiastic about playing around with this ship, and I just want to gauge it a bit better than just, you know, getting views. I want to I gauge it on how many people actually have enjoyed watching this and have actually, you know, really want it to come out on the workshop. So, leave a like on the video and, you know, let's see how far we can get to that goal of 100. Peace!